If you're looking to pass the Expert Business Practitioner Test, ADO E708, I gotta say, you're a brave person. This test is for project managers, solution architects, business analysts, basically the non-developer side of the house. And I'll say right here and now, it's tough, tough. But you're in good company. I passed it. I am definitely not the sharpest knife in the drawer. And I've also helped a lot of other people pass it. I'm guessing it's in the thousands. So I get to give you the cheat sheet on how to nab this, I would say a fairly elusive certification for yourself. The first question is, why should I get this certification? Yeah, the test basically proves deep knowledge of the Adobe Commerce system, and you might extrapolate it out also to the rules around e-commerce in general. You're going to be respected by merchants and your colleagues alike. The big thing that I tell people though is, Adobe is basically vouching for your skills provided you go through this in a normal manner, like you're not cheating. And I wouldn't think you would actually cheat. So you are basically having Adobe vouch for this. They're giving you a badge that you can display on your LinkedIn profile, et cetera. And, and I might even add, if you get certified, give me a shout on LinkedIn and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the biggest, biggest celebration I possibly can give you. Congratulations on getting this certification. So feel free to mention me there. One thing I will say though, is if you're feeling timid about going all the way and just getting this expert level certification, you could always start with a professional business practitioner certification. I've seen it done uh, and, and ultimately I have not seen many people do it though. Most of the people that I interact with, they're just going straight for the expert edition. Now, I want to set your expectations in this. Don't be disappointed if it takes two tries. In fact, I would say the average is about one and a half times, 1.7 times of taking the test actually get the certification. Now, I mean, that means for some people it takes two, for other people it takes one time. And for very, very, very few I have ever seen, it takes three times. Like I say, it's not the easiest test in the world. And again, don't be surprised if it takes two rounds. One thing I wanna call out right now is this question that's probably being asked in your mind, what happens if I fail the test? The wonderful sales coach Zig Ziglar said, failure is an event, it is not a person. So in other words, if you fail the test and I have failed Magento tests myself, it does not mean you are a failure. It simply means you need a little bit more investment, a little bit more work. Now, what often happens is that people spend a lot of time studying, which is really good. They go, maybe they fail the test. They're really disappointed. They're, they're really, really upset at themselves. And so literally they, they say, okay, I'm going to take a break, give it, you know, three weeks. And then I'm going to start studying again. You can do that, but you know what's going to happen? That three weeks is going to erase a good portion of the knowledge you just spent however many weeks or months working to gain. It's very counterintuitive. The best thing you can do after you fail a test is to push that gas pedal down and to keep on studying and you will get it. So how do we get certified? What is this process I have to go through in order to be ready to get certified? Let's chase a rabbit for a second. Do you know what the biggest enemy of you getting certified is? Would you think I'm crazy if I said it is not a low score? Joseph, you just said you just said it was that, right? No, I didn't really. The biggest enemy is you start preparing and then you fall off because life happens. You know, like we get to the summer and it's oh, it's beautiful weather outside, or work happens. You, your sales team signs a new project. You're the best person at the company to handle it, and they say, hey whatever your name is, you, you got to take this project. It's a big workload. The client needs it done yesterday, but you are the person to do it. I need you to clear everything off your schedule, get it done. You say, okay, okay, great. I can do that. And what happens? Your study falls by the wayside. So I have a vaccine for that. If this is helpful, two parts to this vaccine. It's two doses. Uh, the first dose is to go schedule your test today. You're watching this video right here. Go schedule your test. Put it on pause. That's a cool feature in YouTube. Just put that thing on 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 uh, pause and get over in there and schedule that test. 
Now, the second aspect of this is to allot 15 to 30 minutes a day of study. Now, if you do that on your own time, talk to your manager, get it done on business, work time, whatever it is, you have to be consistent. Spend that time in preparing to take the test. Those two doses will ensure you are successful and it gets you to the finish line to be able to prove your capabilities while you're sitting and taking your test. Another question that comes up is how much time should I allot or plan on to be able to pass this test? And again, it's wildly varying answers, right? Somebody who has been in the in Magento 2 since, you know, 2016, uh, they're gonna they might have a lot easier time, but that even in itself can be deceiving. Why is that? Well, because what if they're on the sales side and they literally they're selling Magento all day long, but they never actually get into the admin. So yes, they know all the uh, the features at a like a marketing paper level, but they haven't actually gone and experienced this. And this test is very much about nuance. You'd fail, but perhaps you're one year in as a maybe a, a business analyst and you are in the admin every single day. You're studying it. You're learning it. Oh yeah, you probably will do quite well with this. I am going to give you three suggestions on what does it take to get Adobe's business practitioner certified. Number one, start with the Adobe test syllabus. I'm putting the link to this down in the description below. And you want to go through and give yourself a objective review on each one of those points. How does your knowledge compare to each one of those points? Uh, you could also take a practice test at this point Check your score out on each one of these different objectives like this feature we have in our practice test, but do not, and if I could say this again, do not look at the question, the answers. You see, if you do that, you are spoiling the value that this practice test brings and uh, yeah, it's probably that question pool or those questions become worthless. Number one is review that syllabus. Get familiar with what does it take to get certified? What areas of knowledge does it take? Number two, this is where you ultimately have a choice. You can either read the dev docs or the user guide, most of the user guide, a little bit of the dev docs, what I suggest on the API area, uh, come up with practice scenarios, or the other option would be to use our prep course at the risk of a shameless plug. And if you think it's a shameless plug, just skip past about 15, 20 seconds. Our course has really helped a lot of people get certified. It's reasonably priced. We even do discounts depending on where you are, what your billing country is in the world. One cool feature of this is you get a commerce enabled environment. So you can follow along and experience every feature for yourself. It's incredible. It really is, has been powerful helping people get certified. Now, if you choose to self-study, I would still recommend you have a commerce enabled environment, which unless you work for an agency is pretty difficult to get. Uh, the other thing, or actually a merchant that has a commerce enabled environment. Uh, the other thing is if you're gonna self-study, make sure to just read the user guide, memorize that user guide, understand how each one of these pieces works together. So once you feel like you have a good foundation of knowledge within the Adobe Commerce platform, the third area is to take a practice test. You can use our practice test, uh, which has 92 questions. It's divided into two question pools. I actually helped write one of the uh, earlier versions, the, the last version of this test, not this most recent version. So uh, we have very good experience with what type of questions go into these tests. It's as real as possible. Uh, it, Adobe does not seem to have a practice test currently available for the business practitioner expert. Uh, so if that changes, I'll be sure to let you know here in the comments uh, below. But as of recording this video, I was not able to find it. They have one to practice test for most of their other tests. What will the questions be like for this business practitioner test? Remember, we are at the expert level. And so basically all the questions are gonna be scenario-based. What's scenario-based? It's basically a paragraph of information along with a question at the bottom. The, the paragraph of information sets up a question with some information about this. So for example, I'm gonna read one of our practice test questions out to you. So you can skip kind of the idea of what this is like. You are assisting a merchant in configuring inventory for their store. 
The merchant is stocking in, uh, stocking merchandise into retail stores. The merchant has a number of products that they are concerned might sell out with online sales. They wish to always keep a reserve quantity on hand for one store and a larger reserve for the other store. How do you accommodate this request? And there are several options to be selected. You know, there is usually either three choices with a radio button, one of those circle buttons. You can only choose one of them, or it's going to be four options that are checkboxes. That means two correct answers, or yeah, two, two, both of two answers in order to be correct. And then in some cases, there might be five where you have to do three, select three correct answers. These questions are not easy. And unfortunately, with the uh, scenario-based, uh, well, with the Adobe tasks, the way they've written them, it really, you, you can't select a, if you select a wrong uh, answer in those check marks, you know, if to, to get two right or three right, it, the whole question, it's not partial credit. So you either get the whole thing right or you get the whole thing wrong. These questions are difficult. I'm not saying this to scare you off. I'm setting this to set your expectation, which when you have proper expectations going into this, yeah, you're going to be 100% successful. Now, the final aspect of this is to pass the test, you have to log into the Adobe Credential Management System to take your test. Now, you have to be in a quiet, pristine environment, so like not with your colleagues walking around talking. Uh, you need to do it on your laptop or at least have a detachable webcam. I guess most people have laptops nowadays. So with your webcam on it, there's probably, they might even ask you to show it around the room just to make sure you're not, ha don't have any hidden. Well, I mean, okay, yeah, hidden is, you wouldn't see hidden cameras, but uh, perhaps you, they're like, if there's, I don't know, cheat sheets or whatever, they're just trying to make sure all the obvious stuff is out of the way. And I, good news, I know you would never, ever cheat on this. So the goal is to, have a focused environment. I love taking my tests in my office. Just it's where I always take them. It's super easy, uh, super simple to um, focus. I actually, what I do is I set up a little table over here. So it's not even with my normal computer desktop area. So I, I know this is, my mind tells me this is something that's out of the ordinary, but it's still comfortable. And so it gets my mind engaged. I also, you might say I'm superstitious here, but I like to take my tests on Tuesday. Why? Well, because I'm studying like crazy the whole week before. I always take Sunday as a, as a break from my study. Monday, I'm back in it, and then I'm ready Tuesday morning. So I don't do anything else before taking this test. Tuesday morning, I jump in and I take that test. Now, one thing that can be a hindrance in taking these tests is, well, literally how to take the test. You see, uh, it doesn't happen as much anymore because Adobe gives you two minutes per question, which is about two hours in order to pass the business practitioner certification. But there is still, it has been a scenario where people go through the test and they're not able to finish it. I have a solution for that. This worked really well for me and I've recommended it to many others to, to utilize a solution. And that is this. Split up your test taking into three different rounds. The first round is the triage. The second one is the uh, the deep review, the deep work of, of the test. And then the third one is the review. Let's look at each one of these individually. You see, a triage round is you're, you're determining what's going on. Uh, ultimately, in the terms of a battlefield or a mass casualty incident, unfortunately, here in the States, we have some incidents where uh, the... Uh, roads become slippery and it's tons and tons of snow and cars start smashing into each other and it turns into a disaster. Well, in a case like this, the first responders have to walk through this mess of mangled steel to try to find the people who are in most critical condition. They're going to take them to the hospital first. People who have a little cut or scratch or bruise or something like that, they're going to say, let's talk later. They're going to get the people who really need help done first. So the triage is them walking around and seeing who needs help first. I'm glad we don't have to do that here with taking a test, but we can learn a lesson from this. And that lesson is this. Our first round of taking the test is our assessment. What is this looking like? How, how is this going to work out? Great. So we go through this. We want to burn through this round, all 60 questions in, I would say about 20, 30 minutes if you can. Knock that out. Every question you don't know, just mark, check the mark for review box and move on. Hopefully you won't have 50% of the test marked for review, but if it is, oh well. You at least know what you're up against. Round two 
is the deep work uh, round. Basically, you're gonna walk through every one of those marked questions. You're gonna sit there and think about it. Okay, what did I not understand? What, read it several times. Uh, try to understand what is happening. Read it as loud as you possibly can in your mind. You can't read it out loud, but read it loudly in your mind and take the time to figure it out. One little trick is I have yet to take a test where there wasn't a couple of times where one question answered another question. So use that to your benefit. The goal is to uncheck every single one of those mark for reviews. Some of it, yeah, it might be your best guess. Some of it, you might say this is flat out wrong. I don't know if it was wrong or not, but some you might say a couple of questions are even wrong. The answers are uh, that Magento gives or Adobe gives to you. That's round number two, that deep work round. Number three round is the review round. You're gonna go through and answer every single one of those questions as if you never saw it before. Take your time, walk through those questions. This is going to be very valuable for you because at least in my experience, I usually switch the answer for two or three questions. Uh, but here's the, here's the dangerous aspect and this, will cause, this could cause you to fail the test. Don't switch the answers just because you feel like another one's better. Form a very solid case as far as why this previous answer was incorrect, what you did not know about it. Maybe you missed a word. Maybe you didn't grasp the meaning correctly. Maybe you learned something from another question that now influences your answer here. Those are all valid reasons, but just saying, yeah, I feel like it's the right answer. No, that is not the right answer. And you want to know another gotcha? And that is by doing your job as you take the test. I know that's, that sounds bizarre. It really does. But hear me out. You as a project manager, business analyst, a solution architect, perhaps a developer, you are responsible for helping merchants succeed. And part of that is saying, taking the requirements that they give you and blowing them to pieces, just ripping them to shreds, saying, okay, what impact might come from implementing these requirements as is? What potential problems could come from this? And then you formulate questions and you help refine these requirements. Don't do that with this test. I have seen people fail the test because they literally did that. And I'm serious. I am 100% serious. Read the question and take the information, all of it at face value and don't read into any bit of it. I've had so many conversations with people. They say, oh, you know what? I didn't actually see those words in there. Oh, but, but I, that's just like best practice. I would assume, it. no, don't assume anything. Just read the question as it is and answer it as it is. It sounds dumb, but our, our intuition just gets, gets going and it can actually cause us to answer some questions incorrectly. So there is your tutorial on how to achieve this wonderful business practitioner expert certification. You can do it. Let's see you get certified.